Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joyce Ng. Joyce, uh, a lot of a lot of big shows premiering this week. It's April. April Fools? No, yeah. it's over. It's not fooling now. No fooling because there's Ripley out and Sugar. Yeah, those are, I guess, the the biggest ones this week. Yeah, we're we're getting the most down Irish to, ones at least. Definitely the most Irish. We're getting down to uh I guess not the end of the the, the season, but there's a lot of a lot of the big shows are coming now, right? Like we'll see in the next few weeks. Uh and none none more exciting for us at least today than Ripley and Sugar. Joyce, you watched these, so did I. Yeah, and so we're recording this on Wednesday, but this is airing Thursday. Yes. Which is also the day that Ripley drops. And then Bargo is finally lifted. <laughs> Netflix Love a day there. of release embargo date. Which I was surprised by because if you were reading between the lines on Twitter, a lot of people were excited about Ripley, even though they couldn't talk about it. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like Netflix does this sometimes of certain shows. Like they're they're too cautious about the reactions. You know, so so they hold the embargo date very late if not until the day of in this case which gives the impression that the show was bad because that's usually what it means if the embargo date is very late i wonder if it's the same i I agree with that that is the impression but i feel like if it was a movie obviously you're like this movie sucks right but i think for Mm -hmm. tv and especially because there's so much tv i wonder if they've strategized that actually just doing everything when people when it's available to watch is actually better and maybe they actually know the re- like I I'm assuming the reviews for this will be strong. Yeah, I I think it, the reviews will be good. Um and the 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 show is good and it's an, it's a it's a I don't know if I could say it's like super entertaining but it's very watchable. I uh I found it very watchable and actually entertaining as well. I, I was in, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's me. like, but it's not like like fun entertaining, you know? Like, no. it's just, I mean, like, it's the talented Mr. Ripley, so we all know the story, so. So, it's the talented Mr. Ripley, but much, I I, I, having, I did not read the book, so when I was talking to well, you Well, you don't this, read, so. I don't know how to read, which is a problem. But I remember I was talking to you about this, and I was like, where is the Cate Blanchett character, and when is this going to happen? And you were like, that was all shit made for the movie. So I was like, great. I remember the movie really well. It's a great movie. Uh, but I didn't know much about the actual book. And also, I just want to tell readers slash listeners that this was also when Chris was more than halfway through the show. And if you remember the movie, Kate's fictional, fictional, uh, or invented character for the film comes in at the very beginning when Matt Damon arrives well, in Italy. <laughs> to my credit, I was like, it's a different interpretation. So maybe they just changed around when she comes in. So wait, so are you saying for the past 25 years, you thought Kate's character was in the book? Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't I? I don't read a book. I'm not because it was like, like, Miguel at the time, like, talked about how he created the character for Kate and he gave her more material because he loved her so much. I'm, 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 I don't remember, but I, I like the movie a lot. I'll tell you. So, so we'll, I guess we'll start with Ripley, Joyce. You'll be shocked to know we have, we put it in. I mean, you, you said this in our column last week after you finished, because I, I watched it before you did, and then you finished it last week, and then you immediately put it into series. <laughs> well, we were talking about just to, to give myself slight, uh, the, the tiniest amount of credit, we were talking about how uh, both of us in our limited series uh, picks did not have Netflix represented. And it feels like Netflix has historically at least gotten in here. And we know that they're the biggest, uh, most seen, right? Like all these different things. So what would be the Netflix show to get in? And the options were like Griselda or Ripley. Well, having seen Ripley, I was like, hell yeah, Ripley, I think could get in. I think people are really going to like it. Uh, I think Andrew Scott is definitely going to get in. And I think you can get enough like craft nominations that it would be like, you know, like a lot of support elsewhere that gets it in, in the, like in the larger group. So I think, I think it'll get in. I have it in. Yeah. Um, this is it. Uh, well, it's interesting because this was an acquisition yes. by Netflix. It was, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, originally at Showtime. Yes. Not a so, lot of people seem to know that either. Yeah, a lot of people don't seem to know that. They're giving Netflix a lot of credit for things that were made under the Showtime umbrella. 
<laughs> I saw one that was like, wow, this is the greatest looking Netflix show I've ever seen. Like it's I'm not like, Netflix. Yeah, it is because it's Showtime show. Uh, it looks <laughs> gorgeous. Robert Ellswood obviously shot it. It's in black and white. So a lot of people are going to go crazy for the the visual flair. Uh, yeah. Uh, Steve Zalian directed all the episodes. Uh, it um, looks and wrote great. it. And he wrote it. It looks great. Uh, I think anytime you do anything in black and white, it's already going to be up, uh, upsell. Yeah, like it's like it's elevated Sold. already. And then it's yeah. like Ellswit, of course. Let's go. And then like, yeah, like people who think it's actually Netflix are like, of course Netflix got Ellswit. It's like, no, actually Showtime did. And uh, <laughs> it's very, uh, like you said, it's very watchable. I found it like very easy to watch and often engaging. And I think Andrew Scott is like kind of hilarious in the part. I think he's <laughs> like, it, it maybe could be, like my impression, my remembrance of Talented Mr. Ripley, which I know you watched after you watched this show. Yeah, after I finished watching the show, I was like, I'm gonna watch the movie again. <laughs> and I remember being a little more straight faced and serious. Is that my is that accurate? No, I wouldn't say it's like I I think there there are some I I, I did rewatch the movie after. Um, yeah. there are some funny parts in it. I think like it the the humor level is probably the same um i think well since you didn't read the book the the show is more faithful to the book um clearly not the movie that much since kate's character sure invented for the film um but yeah there are more there are more changes in the film but i i think like you know like you, it's hard to compare them because that's like a two-hour movie you know so things happen quicker and i think the show is deliberately methodical but not in a, a a total slog kind of way no we'll see like again it's a book that's you know 60 years old and the movie's been yeah and it's also a book series and so like all, this is i'm gonna couch this as saying spoiler alert i guess so if you're like gonna yell at us. but when <laughs> after me <laughs> but in the show uh as people who are watching it now we'll see in the third episode after dickie is murdered mm -hmm. uh they go painstakingly through the process of that. And I think people- Yeah, and will, you can't get that in the movie. And I do think people will actually like find that whole sequence like riveting only because it's like, there's no music. It's all natural sound. It's like, he's not speaking at all. So it's like Andrew just trying to like figure out as Tom had to like excise himself from this situation. Uh, and I think people would really will like respond to the filmmaking of it. I thought would be like, I, I just think like that's going to be like, a standout yeah like that episode. that whole sequence is is great because like we don't really because in the film after matt damon murders drew law it's just like it cuts to him having already gotten rid of the boat yes right but like in the show you get this really long sequence of like you said uh andrew trying to get himself out of the situation and there's a a very funny sequence in the water and that's all i'll say it, I've watched it like 28 times. <laughs> it's super funny. And like, there's a lot of dark humor in the whole show. Mm -hmm. And I think as it goes forward, it gets funnier because it's like so outlandish. And like, he's such a, he, you are, I mean, like they've talked, like you don't want to root for him, but he's clearly the most. Well, like, he gets away with it. That's like, we all know this. He's like, also the most likable character. I mean, they make every other character who are the ostensible good guys, like really annoying or just bad at their jobs or just kind of like, callous and and silly and and so you're almost like rooting for tom uh it's a great andrew scott performance he's very funny i put him right in joyce as you know well you already had him in before you saw it i did did you had it you had so i have him, him up in second now i think i still no, have... not 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 winning though no i still have uh hero sonato winning for shogun who is my fave and i'm gonna just manifest that hopefully to a win yeah i put because i watch Ripley like two three weeks ago and I didn't have Andrew in before that but after I watched it, I was like I'm definitely putting him in I'll I'll wait on the show but the it's it's just a showcase for Andrew the whole series it's he's just really eight episodes in, of Andrew Scott he's the whole thing it's like he's in every yeah. episode uh it's really great I I thought of all the supporting performers I actually thought Dakota Fanning was uh good I think she comes mostly in the set back half of the the mm -hmm. show not as much in the beginning and i really liked uh the italian detective though i already forgot his name joyce but who plays the, the guy? oh ravini uh it's yeah. uh maurizio lombardi really really fun uh it's like a cat and mouse game between them at the end and there's there's a you know requires a, a little bit of suspension of disbelief 
you know, from the viewer for how uh, Tom keeps evading so, the rest. So, and <laughs> again, not to spoil it, but like, if you've seen the, I'm not going to like go into specifics, but I will say like, I did think there was the commentary of the fact that like, it's actually easy for him to get away with so much of it because he mm -hmm. is a man is just really fun, I think. And they do kind of like lean, like they just are automatically going to believe him because it's like, why wouldn't I believe this guy, right? Like, I'm not going to trust somebody else. Like this man presents himself as very nice and wealthy. So of course I'm going to believe him. Uh, yeah, Maurizio Lombardi is the detective inspector and he is like, like uh, Hercule Perot, but like stupid. I thought it's just great. He's just I like feel like he should have had more like a, uh like backup there but but no i i like i like that their rapport really fun it, it's yeah. it's a great it's like a really really watchable show i think people will watch it because it's on netflix i think it'll mm -hmm. be like I, I think for a few reasons a like you said everybody wants andrew scott to get in like after mm -hmm. missing for all the strangers at the oscars and like and love Bafta. andrew scott and all these different things. So I and think also that, Fleabag like, at the Emmys. Right. So it's like, there's a real groundswell of support for Andrew Scott. It's a recognizable IP that I think most people are familiar with or know. Not if they haven't read the book, they've probably seen the movie. And it's not that long, right? I think it's seven episodes or eight episodes. What it's was eight it? episodes. So the first couple episodes are probably like around 50 minutes. And right. then uh, uh, after he murders dickie there are a couple episodes that are an hour and then the finale is 74 minutes the finale is a, a movie basically <laughs> uh but never i was still like oh this is like not you, you don't finale. feel you don't feel like it needs you, you don't feel like you want to check out at any point really like even mm -hmm. like me like i i know the story and like you know i know in theory how it ends right because like he does get away with it right so like they they could maybe change it up in their own way or whatever like how the film did right but like i know what happens but it's, it's very watchable and i think uh yeah like you said like his performance is really great too because he also um tell me how you feel about this uh so andrew scott is 47 years old irl and tom ripley the character uh is in his 20s like in, in the books yes. right yeah same thing with dickie and johnny flynn who plays dickie here is 40 uh or 41 now i think he, he just had a birthday and you know like they look like dudes in their 40s like they can maybe pass for dudes in their 30s and i've talked to some of my friends about this too who have also seen ripley like we're like it andrew feels too old for the part oh yeah because like in the film like matt damon was like 28 when he made it right you know like they were all like that whole cast was like in their 20s and it like it makes sense like narratively like in the book and like in the film too like for dickie's dad to be like i to hire someone to bring my wayward son in his 20s home please it it doesn't feel like that that would necessarily happen for someone in his 40s you know like it's like this is a phone grown man it it definitely and, uh it we're in a funny era now because like i feel like maybe like 10 years ago remember it was always like jennifer lawrence is playing like 40 year old women at like 28 right david o russell would constantly cast her as like an older up and now I feel like we're having every, like, it reminded me of Leo and Flower Moon. Like, Leo and Flower Moon should have been played by, like, a 25-year-old, right? And he's, like, almost 50. Or so, or he's 50, right? Leo's, like, 51 He'll be 50 now. this year. Okay. So he's 50 this year. So he was way too old to play that part. In addition to whatever else you want to say about that, he was too old. And Which is why it was funny when Jesse Plemons calls him son. Right. And De Niro is old, too old to play that. Like, Leo should have played the De Niro part. So, like, in this, I felt there's the same thing. Because I was like, man, Andrew Scott is like 40. Like you said, he's like, to quote my favorite uh, 21 Jump Street, it, it, you look like a fucking 40 year old man, right? It's like he's not passing as. Uh, and it's not a, the same way as like, you know, how like high school shows, like CW shows cast no, older actors no. to play high school students, you know? No, but at the same time, while he is supposed to be young, and I think you implicitly know that, they don't actually play up then his age at all. It's not like they're like, oh, we're looking for like a 25. No, and they never say their age, but right. it's just like, you just look at their faces and you know, you know? Right. And and so that kind of doesn't always, 
So I, I didn't mind that. It, I was not, I was, I suspended disbelief enough, but he definitely is too old for it. Um, but yeah, it's great. It's great fun. I was thinking like, I mean, last year Netflix with like, I mean, Beef was obviously like the big limited series for Netflix. And obviously I don't believe for a second that this would get, I mean, they had how many acting nominees from B5? Is that right? They had, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, they don't even have like five people. Like, because I think they'll, it'll just be Andrew, yeah. Dakota, think- and Johnny would be like the main right. push. So I'm like- them. I don't think they'll get like near, like they'll get Andrew. And I don't think anybody else will probably get in. Maybe you can make the case for Dakota, but I do feel like I, all I only crafts... have Andrew in right now. I mean, yeah, like it'll have a lot of crafts. Um, and a lot of the craft stuff we get in. It could costumes, get, it could get directing and writing, directing, writing, costumes, movies. cinematography. Um, and like editing. Yeah. It could get yeah. a lot of below the line stuff. I, I like, I think it'll do, well yeah um with the public um but it's also not like um you know it's not like necessarily fun right like I felt like when I watched beef last year before it premiered I was like oh like this is gonna play really well like I knew like right away like this will land yeah you know and it 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 dropped the same weekend like the first weekend in April last year um so I I would definitely put Ripley in before Griselda. Definitely. As a and Netflix I think show. And I think Netflix probably would prioritize Ripley more than Griselda. They've they've also been doing <clears throat> promo already for like Andrew and Dakota have been on talk shows and everything. So let, let me give you a little anecdote I heard last week, Joyce, which I'll, we'll talk about this later because we actually got an email about this, but I hosted it we we talked about this week. I hosted a panel for loot. Yes, uh, we know this. Week. So we'll put a button on that. But while I was there, I was talking to some people and somebody was like, oh, I was here at the location the other day walking down and there was a massive line down the block. And I was like, what is this for? And you know what the answer was? Ripley. And everyone yeah, was- th- there was a screening in thrilled. Q&A last week for Ripley and they screened the first three episodes, which and- uh, altogether is still shorter than Flower Moon. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, remember Flower Moon? Uh, and- they were like, oh, everybody was online, like waiting online uh, to see t- Andrew and was like super psyched. So I was like, I think people are going to be very excited. But I agree with you. It's not going to have like, like beef because of like the contemporary like mm-hmm. setting and the music. And then just the, the premise too. Was great. And like the cast, I think as a whole, people really had like a lot of entry points into. And this is just like the Andrew show basically. But I think that's enough to get people excited. And I, I mean, do I don't think it like- needs... In, in terms of acting, I don't think it needs more than no, him. No, so, so I do think like, it'll get in overall. We we've talked about. So you were you were an early adopter to this choice, and you're gonna laugh in my face because I was like, "You're crazy! I can't believe this." But you were like, "Man, why is Fargo in first place in the odds? And what if it doesn't even?" Are you get coming in? around to my Fargo snub? Well, here's why: because <laughs> I think Shogun. We both. I have Shogun in first. I love it, and we could talk. Same. We'll talk more about that later because I think we have an email about it. Uh, man, it's just cooking. Lessons in chemistry is like a leader in the clubhouse kind of thing, right? Like a lot of guild support feels like should break through. True Detective obviously has the IP and the brand was a big hit. Why wouldn't HBO get that in, right? It just seems like likely it would get in and Jody could win. And I think Ripley is like, like really sad because like we said, the Netflix visibility, Andrew, and I think it has a lot of opportunities below the line to get in and like a lot of different, like, uh, you know, members will find things to like about it so then i'm left with like fargo and then i really wanted to put the sympathizer in because i watched all of that we can't really talk about it yet uh you can talk about it next week next week we'll talk about the sympathizer and when we do i will say man i really wanted to put that in but i don't know what to drop and now i'm like maybe i should just drop fargo because <laughs> like it's not like i think you said this too it's uh, like i think shogun would be the main priority for fx it is absolutely fx's main priority <laughs> they've never liked fargo right historically really uh i don't know i'm like i think it could really miss i think you were dead on right about that. <laughs> and i haven't done it yet but like man i'm so close to doing it especially also because of like recency bias like i think if some of these later shows do pop like we'll see like sympathizer who knows what the reviews are like and like whatever but I'm like, maybe there's room to shake out one of these earlier shows and Fargo would maybe be the one to drop because it's like a fifth season that's like a great season was better than anything, I think, since the first season. But they've already kind of like 
moved on from it, like you've said. So yeah, I was like laughing and my, I was like looking at my pics and I was like, I cannot Because believe- you, you get so attached to things you like and it doesn't work that way. I know. So that's why I'm like, I think I should maybe drop it. But then the problem is I was going to replace it with Sympathizer, which I also really like. You also like. like- I should, <laughs> so I should wait. Yeah, but- I, I mean, if we're talking about like in between Fargo and Sympathizer, like I, I think like they have the- the same amount of like pros and cons to I haven't finished a uh, sympathizer yet I've only seen two of them but I really enjoyed it what I've seen so far it's a lot of fun um great performances and um I with with that I kind of worry about the late premiere because it's yeah. premiering April 14 and the past two years like what they've nominated in limited series they were all early releases like right. the, in the winter or like from the fall prior you know Right. And last year, Beef was the latest release, and that was April 6th. Right. You know, and that was all at once, too, whereas Sympathizer is a weekly release. All of, going all of this is way. true. This is why I left yeah. Margo in. But I'm like, I do think it's way more vulnerable than people think, except for you, obviously, because you were on this. Uh, and I do think that uh, it's in first place because of people really liking it. But I think mm-hmm. in reality, I would say Shogun or Lessons in Chemistry is a better, like, favorite at the moment. Yeah, like with Fargo, I think, yeah, like this season five was obviously a return to form. And like you said, like a lot of people really like and enjoy the season. Um, but I I also feel like it hasn't really sustained a lot of buzz since it finished in January, yeah. you know? One, one of the things um, I noticed is talking to the people is like, they were already out on it. And then they were told that it's good and they're like, oh, I'll, I'll get back. Oh, that's great to know. You know what I mean? Like, I think people had were out on the show a little. And so then it's like, hey, the show is great and that's great. But maybe they'll be slow to return. And that's maybe why some of the buzz is like not as high. I don't know. Yeah. And it's never like it. It really got lucky 10 years ago winning limited series because True Detective competed in drama. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, True Detective would have won limited series Mm -hmm. or it was called mini series back then 10 years ago and yeah like so and then it it's gone it's won the the emmys that fargo has won are below the line like it it has never won an acting Mm -hmm. emmy it's gone you know several of its cast members nominated like sometimes some of it was like bad luck like season two which was great went up against oj you know, so like basically the only category it could win was supporting actress for Jean mm-hmm. Smart. And then they just went with Regina King again for American Crime, like a forgotten series, <laughs> you know. And um, and then yeah, like uh season three, they were up against Big Little Lies and Feud. Um, and then season four was just a flop. Like it it that was that's the first season it failed to get above the line nominations it just got three below the line mm-hmm. and like even true detective which had a abysmal second season it it rebounded with its third season a little bit it got nine nominations and uh got in mahershala too it got it got a it's its most recent season before this one perform better than Fargo's most recent se- season yes. before this one all of these this is why i was like i'm really i think we'll see, like you said the reason I'm reticent to like take it out altogether is because who like there's such a glut of limited series coming between now and like end of May. And especially those ones that are coming late are going to be probably just left by the wayside because there's just not enough time. But if one of them does break through, then maybe there is a world where it shakes out that Fargo misses. I think that's very possible. Right now I have it. I moved it down to fifth. That was how I compromised with myself. I moved it into fifth place. Yeah, like I think it 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 would benefit from being one of the earlier releases since we've seen that those have done better the last two years. Like yeah. if if you've gotten in front of their eyeballs early enough. But again, you know, like we know Shogun is Upbox's top priority. Yeah. Which also makes sense because they've invested millions and ten years of development into this show. Right, they bought a Super Bowl slot, whereas like with Fargo, like yeah, it's a return to form, but it's you know fifth season. They've they've won the category before already, you know, and um, yeah, like you know, like I I don't have Juno in. I think that that was what you were perturbed by. So I'd still have her in because I just the reason I kept her in is because I don't know who I would take her out for. I guess we have just so. 
I have Jody, Anna, uh, Sawe for Shogun, Brie Larson, Kate Winslet, Juno, and Naomi Watts. And I guess I could put Sophia in for Juno, but I just was like, I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know. I guess it could. I think Sophia could happen without, like, that is a, a very baity transformative performance, even if Griselda doesn't get in to series. Um, yeah, like, Juno missed SAG. Uh, John Hamm was Naomi Fargo actor to get in and like sag has never been high on fargo either because he was the first fargo actor to get in since billy bob thornton for the first season right. <laughs> so, so maybe she does miss then um yeah i i don't know like i've i i feel like it might stay in first for a while in, in nods fargo but um I, I gotta assume shogun will eventually unseat it but i mean i feel like users are not it's a little early maybe and they're not updated like shogun's in third i feel like it should move up personally but. yeah but i i don't know i i can definitely see fargo being like the quote shocking snub yes of a nomination morning yes. like made two years ago and blackbird yeah. last year which yeah. i called and it was in like third place in the odds <laughs> It, it absolutely like, feels like that because again, it just is like the other thing I guess I was thinking too. And I don't know if this matters, but I'm like, like Fargo would probably be at the lower end of most people's list. Like if you were ranking them one to five, right? Like you would probably, you might be as good as I think it is. You probably are going to be more passionate about some of these other shows. And maybe that is like the lack of enthusiasm will help hurt it. Even if it has a lot of like fans. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was also talking about this with someone the other day. I I feel like the regime and the sympathizer should have switched release dates. I would feel a lot more confident about sympathizer had it like gotten regime's release date, but I just don't think it was ready. I, I wonder if it wasn't ready. And I do think that just based on Kate and like this Will Tracy having been a succession writer, it's just as like they were like higher on that to get I don't think they were that high. Like, I, I don't think it, it because they they didn't really go hard on the promo or marketing for it. Like, they've gone really hard on the sympathizer promo and marketing. You know, we've had so many trailers and artwork. Like, they did very little for the regime. It was just like, here's a trailer. And then, think like, you're, you're right. But do you think that's because, like, the regime is an easier, like, sympathizer is. We'll talk about this next week, but I was like, I, I find it like, it seems like a hard sell because it's hard to describe it is, yeah. what it is, right? I mean, like they sent uh, a screener letter that was just like, it's like a bunch of different genre. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like playing with the genre conventions. It's referencing itself as like a piece of art. It is strange and funny and like disturbing. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's hard to promote and maybe that's why they're trying so hard to promote it, I guess, maybe. Whereas the regime is like, here's Kate Winslet is like a Trump dictator. Yeah, but I, I guess like regardless of when it's premiering or or like if it were premiering earlier, they could have just started that promo earlier, yeah, right? right? Like right. it's like, I, you're right. you know, yeah. so um, yeah, I yeah I, I think had it premiered in March, I would feel better about it because yeah. it will have more runway to build an audience and support. And like, because we've seen, you know, a lot of, like April and even May premieres the past couple of years just miss out uh, or especially in the top category, right? It might get like acting nominations, you know, like Andrew Garfield for Under a Banner of Heaven yeah. or it's like just, Colin Firth and Tony Collette for The Staircase, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's just too late. Like a lot of these shows just come too yeah. late and it's just it's like there's too much TV and people can't keep up and it's the same problems over and over again. And then like, that's why they default to stuff they've seen or like you suggested, like past nominees that they know. And then there you go. Uh, we could talk. The other show we can we can talk about is uh, the Apple TV drama Sugar Joyce. One of my faves of the season. So you much love fun. this show. <laughs> <laughs> it's such uh, it's such an unserious show. I love it. I love unserious stuff because I'm a very unserious person. Well, it was it it, it remains high in the odds. Uh, in series where is that in series in series it's in 10th i believe let me see oh. drama series right now the crown the morning show the gilded age slow horses loki the curse three body problem mr and mrs smith and sugar and then fallout wow but colin is still in 
Colin is in third place, Joyce. I still have Colin in my... You still have him in? I still have him in. I don't have him in. Because it's also like, who would I replace him with, really? I might put him in now. I'm going to do this live. I'm taking out Morgan (laughs) Spector for the Gilded Age and I'm putting Colin in. I'm keeping Idris Elba in for hijack. He's not high in the odds, but I just feel like that will absolutely happen. I have no, like, I have no reasons for this, except that I think it will. So I'm keeping him sure. in. Uh, and I have Colin in too now. Uh, but <laughs> what you, so let's, let's talk about this show, Joyce. Uh, there is, we, we I, I think only the first, the first two episodes or three episodes are out now, or what is it? Uh, it premieres April 5th. So Friday. So, so tomorrow when you're watching or listening to this, uh, and it's the first two episodes right. of eight. Uh, so it's only eight episodes. The episodes, here are some pros. Very short. 36 minutes. Oh, yeah. I love that. This is how you hook me in. The, the premiere is 50 minutes, which is also fine. And then everything after that is like 36 minutes. <laughs> uh, Colin plays a, a private investigator. Mm-hmm. John Sugar. Whose specialty is finding missing people. Mm-hmm. And he's tasked in the early episodes with finding a missing young woman by a famous director, producer, uh, played by James Cromwell. Uh, well, James Cromwell is her grandfather. So right. he's this like old school, uh, like old Hollywood, very famous producer. And his granddaughter is missing. Yes. So he hires Colin. And it's a, it's a Hollywood family because there's a director uh, and the brother yes. is an actor uh, mm-hmm. and all these different things. And Colin, uh, we won't talk about, there's a, there's a, a twist choice that has been mentioned in some of the reviews. Yeah, there's a twist. We will not spoil the twist. Well, we can't spoil the twist, but it, it is known that there is a twist and we could say there is a twist. And later I on think if season. you're watching the show, immediately you're going to be aware that there is something else going on beyond what's being presented on screen. It's not like super subtle about the fact that it's high. It's yeah. obfuscating like the real intentions of the show. Yeah, there is way more than meets the eye. And they've kind of done that with the promo too and like the the little clips that like Apple has released. Um, yeah, like they, they're they purposely feeding you breadcrumbs. Like they're not trying to hide it. And it's kind of like asking the viewer if they could, you know, solve the mystery themselves, like figure out what the twist is. I did figure it out before the reveal. So I think we both did in different i'll take credit because i was you, like immediately like there's something wrong you here. you you told me <laughs> your theory and i i was like slightly on board but i thought there was something a little off with your theory because of what it turned out to yes. be like yeah but like it was like like right track basically yes. and uh yeah. so i thought i think that's fine like i enjoy, i enjoy show with a twist i thought mm-hmm. colin is great it's very much like private. It's like classic, like PI stuff. You know what I mean? Like, like old yeah, I Hollywood love a film PI. noir. Yeah, film He's noir. A, yeah, it, it's a, it's very, um, it's also a, a love letter to LA and like old Hollywood and classic films. Like, so uh, John Sugar loves movies. He literally says, I think in the first or second episode, I love movies. That's me. It's like me. He's yeah. like me. Like, I love movies. Says, I like when I texted one of my friends, I was just like, quote, I love movies, Colin Farrell. <laughs> um, sure. And it's they splice in a lot of like old Hollywood movies. And it, like, mm-hmm. I would love to see the budget for the show and like how much they paid. For these it clips looks of great. These films. Uh, who, who's yeah. behind it, Joyce? I forget. There's some like good filmmakers behind it, right? Uh... Well, for, uh, Fernando Morales uh, directed uh, uh, the first couple episodes um simon kinberg is an ep on it and uh yeah so like the first um half of the show before the reveal like it's very like hard-boiled detective yes very much about the case uh which i love like i I love like noir type of stuff and uh colin looks great like he drives around in a corvette he has like bespoke suits and John Sugar is also a very nice guy. Um, and he adopts a dog, Wiley, early on, adorable pet. And he he also like doesn't like to resort to violence. Yes. So 
uh and then he's he's always very determined to find the people like it, like he he never gives up on the case no like he always wants to find the person the missing Good person detective. yeah and then you also know very like right from the jump that there is like some dark backstory to him and some health ailments because he has like this hand tremor mm-hmm. um and then uh kirby and she's now a mononym uh formerly known as kirby howell baptiste i noticed she's that like, in the credits and i was like is there something wrong with the credits and i had to re google to figure out that yes she is uh, yeah now she just goes by kirby yes um she is like his handler and she's always like encouraging him to like see their doctor. So like there's something up and then he has like his own like special drugs. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, that's another part of the mystery too is like, what what is wrong with him? You know, like, you know, so, so it's, yeah. So let me ask you this from the show perspective. I just put Colin in. The other actor <laughs> I think who could maybe get in is uh, Amy Ryan. She's great. She plays, um, uh, she's a she's this rock star and she plays the ex-wife of uh, Bernie Siegel, who is Jonathan's son, played by Dennis uh, Boutsikaris. Yes. So he is also a, he followed, he's a Nepo baby. He followed his dad into the business, but he's like a B-level type of producer. He just makes a ton of schlock. And so Amy plays his ex-wife. And so she and Colin form a, a friendship. So yeah. they have yeah. really good rapport. They have a, yeah great scene together in the finale i i put amy ryan in for supporting because i just was like <laughs> i'm already like they're already like revving that engine up i feel like people really like amy ryan uh i think she could get in for this but i don't have the show in series which i maybe is a fail but i'm like i just don't think it'll make it all the way in um i don't have it in either um and i i feel like there's going to be a polarizing reaction to the twist. Yes. I, I get, I get that sense too, Joyce. Uh, yeah. I haven't I read like any of the reviews, but I saw when the embargo lifted last week, you know, some of the review headlines that mentioned the twist and some uh, were not into it. So I, I think some people's opinions about the show would shift dra- drastically after the reveal because honestly after the reveal like the show does become a totally different show yes and it like i don't i don't have an issue with the twist like i kind of loved it i just thought it was hilarious like i think like i told you i was like i think it's this and then it was that i was just like lol and i was like i love this and it just kind of made me more excited to watch the rest and i i think that'll be like that'll be a thing that keeps people watching too so, yeah. I mean, all these things are positives for it. Uh, I'm just not sure it'll get in for series, but I think the two actors, I think Amy and Colin could get in. I, I, Colin, I'm more sure of, I guess, than Amy. But... It, it's kind of like Ripley to me, where I think if it needs an act or if it gets an acting nomination, it'll just kind of be Colin. Like, it doesn't really need anyone else. And, like, it is the Colin show, really. And he he does get to do a lot in it. And it... It's funny because, like, you know, we we're just talking about True Detective, and obviously he was on True Detective season two, the much maligned season two. And this is like not like that at all, but it's also a different type of detective, too. Like, he's he's not that character from that show. And yeah. it's more, it's like, it's a, it's a very lonely, sad character. It's kind of, yeah. it reminds me more of Banshees. Like, yeah, that's why I think he could get nominated for sure because I think people are familiar with that kind of level of Colin. I will say true to a couple of things here. I just while we're talking, things I thought of. True Detective season two, pretty good choice. I think I think history will look kindly on. True of course, of two. course, you will love season two. <laughs> second second thing was Dennis Buzakar, as you mentioned. And when I was watching the show, I was like, man, I can't believe they got Griffin Dunn to be in Sugar. And then I was watching Girls on the Bus the other day, which I love, and. Griffin Dunn is in there. And I was like, wow, Dennis boots a car. It's great year. He's in sugar and girls on the bus. They are indistinguishable. <laughs> they look exactly like uh, at this point and like are playing basically like kind of the same level, like tone. And I'm just like, what the hell? How are they not the same person? They've, they've aged. They've met here. Like, it's so funny. Also, I just want to say, so Nate Cordry plays uh, Dennis's son. Um yes uh david siegel who has he was also an apple baby he yes. was a child actor and uh 
he was in this film um when he was a kid and now they're making a sequel to it as an adult and they're for like the oscar nuts there's a lot of there's references to the oscars yeah and that so you'll like that and um if this is also a great show like i needed a new show to read yeah and there's a this is a great show to pause and read because they they uh do a lot of mock-ups of files and different things and posters Mm -hmm. like they're fake movies i love that shit so So, yeah and then uh anna gunn plays nate cordry's mom which i was like lol because she's only nine years older than (laughs) yes but yeah and then like he's he's also like a uh you you know he's like on the verge of being canceled uh nate cordry's character because you know he's he's not yeah (laughs) the the last thing i was thinking of too is fernando mariel is a city of god director great year because he also directed one of the the, the, maybe my favorite episode of the sympathizer joyce all all roads lead back to the sympathizer for me now but he's got a great got a lot of good stuff going that's what you're wondering what he's been up to it's all this good tv i guess yeah, but I was like, I was gonna say like, because like Nate is like obviously like that story is kind of like part of the the case. Yes. And but then I I feel like once the reveal of the twist happens, like it, everything with the case kind of becomes secondary. Mm-hmm. And then they they kind of have to like tie up the case basically, and I I think they do find a way to like dovetail everything in the end um uh but i yeah it becomes like you you become like less focused on like the noir of it after the reveal and then the the show also reminds me of season one of the bear because it's like it's like this like lengthy prologue and then in season two it could actually get started on stuff so the end of Sugar season one, it it's like setting up a second season where now that you actually understand what's going on, like shit can happen. Right. I I think I'm um, yeah, like I said, I think it'll do it'll be interesting to see. At least I think the twist will get people talking about it too, which okay. will probably help in terms of visibility. Um, because we know Apple, while it has great programs, not the not the highest traffic of the streamers. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I mean, like it, it could also like get nothing, so that wouldn't surprise me either. <laughs> tough, tough to know. Uh, and then yeah. the last one coming out this week, Joyce, we could get to, we could do this, and I get it was loot. It's coming out. My favorite. Get re- recap your panel. Well, first of all, great, great people. You know who's great? The cast of loot, Joyce. They're all very nice. Uh, it was Michaela J. Rodriguez, Nat Fax, and Ron Bunches. And Maya Rudolph, and uh, boy oh boy, were they just lovely. Maya Rudolph, clearly one of the nicest people I've ever encountered as a celeb. And I was like, immediately afterwards, I was like, she's absolutely going to get nominated. Joyce is right, and this is why she's got like tons of nominations in recent history. Uh, she is. She it was like an event. It was like a guild event. So there was like other act, like actors, working actors there and stuff. Uh, and afterwards, there was like a small reception. And you know who stuck around and like talk to these people Maya Rudolph just was very gracious talk to uh, everyone you know if if that Oscar voter is also an Emmy voter That's who shook RDJ's hand mm-hmm. I hope they were there to shake Maya Rudolph's hand I will say I was like that I think I thought of the I immediately thought of the Downey thing and I was like this is like what it is but I was like also you know it's always weird like we know not, we're not friends with the celebs Joyce. Um, we know that from Almost Famous we are, we are not friends with celebs we're though. not friends with them but I will say she was so polite to me where I was like, wow, Maya Rudolph is really nice. I was like, this, it's like did, when a bartender- Did you take your best friends now after that interaction? I don't know if we're friends. I don't know. But I was like, if we are, that would be great. Uh, she's so nice. Um, I think the show, the second season of Loot is great. I, I thought it was like a big level up from the first season. I think they all know that too, from hearing them talk about it. And certainly that's how they're positioning it. And it was basically like, like you were saying in terms of like, sugar and the bear where it's like the first season is just to get to the second season maybe and i think the bear was more successful at this than sugar and loot because there are great moments in the first season of the bear but it clearly like ratcheted up for season two and i feel like loot is 
like similar in that the second season, you could see what the show is in the second season. It's very much like Parks and Rec or 30 Rock, kind of like that workplace comedy thing that you would expect. I don't know if it's going to yeah, get that, that was That was like the the thesis of their panel at TCA too. Yeah. Like how like they they finally like found their footing in season two. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if it'll get in for series at comedy, but I do think she could get in. And I would be not like, it's like the kind of depends on who gets to see it. And like, like that's the problem with this stuff is like, who's watching this. But I was like, if you told me this got like an ensemble comedy SAG nomination, I would not be totally shocked, I guess. Like would not be shocked at all, but I don't know if that'll actually ever happen. Cause who's watching, who's what, how do you know who's watching these things? I, I mean, I think with Apple, especially like it, when it's like clearly a breakout hit, like, you know, right. You know, like Ted Lasso right, or like Severance. And I don't even think like Morning Show was that much of a, a huge breakout mm-hmm. hit, but that was obviously their flagship series with which they launched the streamer, right. you know, with huge names attached. So, um, yeah and like you know we've seen how like some of their shows can get like these mm-hmm. other nominations but miss the big one so yeah but um but yeah like i i think for loot the good thing for it is like this is not the first se- like it's not a new show right like people could have watched the first season in the past few years and caught up with it already the reason i i, I have not put it in you, you'll be surprised you'll be happy you know i controlled myself and only have my and and only put my in before I did it because of what you were saying and it made sense so that's why I did it um but I still think like Palm Royale which is feels like it's completely gone from the the zeitgeist a little already has a better shot of getting in because of all like the different departments that I think would respond you know what I mean like loot is like in the end It's like writing, maybe, you know, act like acting, writing. It's not like a craft show. Right. And like Palm Royale is definitely like more of a craft show because of the costumes. Period. Yeah. Period. Sure. So I'm like, I think that would elevate Palm Royale overall for a series contender for Apple, even though I think loot is probably better than Palm Royale. Um, Or they could just be the same and both miss. (laughs) And what would get in? I guess we'll see. Who knows? The gentleman just put in the gentleman. Oh yeah, your favorite the gentleman. Yeah, I still I still have not watched more than the pilot. So <laughs> people love the gentleman, Joyce. I'm hearing a lot about. They it. Do. I know real people. The thing is, I know real people who've watched the gentleman. So there you go. It's a real people show. Uh, so. Joyce, should we do some emails here? Do we have any? We have so many, Joyce. Wow. People email us at slugfest at goldderby dot com. A lot of good stuff. We're talking Emmys. So keep going. Next week we'll talk sympathizer and whatever else. But this week we're going to start with Ian. Hi, Joyce and Chris. I never miss your videos. Oh, Always okay. enjoy your take on all the awards. Thanks, Ian. Who do you think are the top contenders for the drama series Emmy acting categories? Thanks to Joyce, I am really into slow horses. Do you think Gary Oldman has a shot at lead actor? Thanks. Uh, I I think he'll get it. I don't know about winners, like, truly. So... It's hard to talk about the I we were we've been talking about this like together and like I think we mentioned it too. I just don't know if the drama actor category will stay the way it is now. And I think we could see someone like Billy Crudup becoming a lead actor. It definitely would be it definitely would make they'll move sense. It, they'll move him to lead. I mean, like that that is a uh, you know, something that could definitely happen. Yes. Um you know, he would obviously have to agree on it if he's not the one who is right. instigating this push. Right. <laughs> you know? Um, so. It, it Just on paper, it makes sense to me because The Morning Show has a lot of drama supporting actor contenders, in theory, even though it doesn't really. Well, like, more- yeah, if they want to, like, push, like, John Hamm in supporting. So John Hamm know? would be an obvious supporting, right? And then, like, you could make the case that Mark Duplass could maybe get in, even though I don't he's think he had as much before. to do. Right. But I don't think he had as much to do this season. So maybe, but he's a past nominee. Right. So like, and then Billy. Like, I guess. Okay. So like, so like last year, you know, like actually around this time, really, or was it a couple of weeks later? I don't know. But, um, you know, Sarah Snook and Kieran Culkin 
went lead and that made sense and they were the ones like we found out later on like they wanted to go lead yes right so I guess it's like you know do you think Billy wants to go lead I don't know maybe not because like I think it makes sense for succession because especially after Logan's death we're coming up on the one-year anniversary of Logan's death next next week we should celebrate it somehow we should just rewatch it and do it yeah yeah that, we'll um, do that next week we'll talk all yeah about. so like that that makes i think that made sense for them for succession because the show really just became about the sibs after that and like them versus ace cars you know whereas like with the morning show like he billy is the most prominent male actor but i don't think the show is like structured the same way as succession is where like it became about the narrative became about the three of them you know like billy is obviously a huge part of the story arc of season three but it was still like jen stuff and reese stuff i i think that's right but i do think he was such a the driving engine of season three is him his character to me and, oh, wait, I mean, like, I don't care if he goes lead. I'm I'm just like trying to like if, yeah. if he thinks like like he can. Right. I mean, I don't know, like not like justify or like if he has like like reason enough to go lead, like never mind the fact of like, can I win and lead if right. that's what he cares about, too. Right. So you know? that said, I do think like. I don't know. Do you think Gary Oldman can win? I have him in first, I think. Right. I have him in first, but I don't know. Like, I have no idea who's winning these things. I'm I'm like, I have a hard enough time picking six people here <laughs> so it's tough i will say if, if i did if billy did jump to lead i would obviously put him in and then i would have to flip between idris elba and my newly added colin farrell uh because i do think the others like i feel like donald glover would be safe for mr and mrs smith even though that has not stuck in the zeitgeist enough for my liking because i really loved it i just feel like it's not being talked about how do you much. think it, it would have done had it been a weekly release I think if it had been a weekly release, people would have been losing their minds for some of the, the twists and like the the way the relationship evolves. That said, I do think everyone I've talked to who watched it like really liked it. I, I think it's got like a high level of like approval and it is like a cool show. Um, but again, no one's really talking about it. I mean, I saw like they, they, they're like bringing Maya Erskine back around to do like press and like kind of pushing her more than Donald, who's probably doesn't necessarily need to. I'm sure he'll he doesn't need to do anything get in anyway um yeah I don't know and then Dominic West and Tom Hiddleston who I don't think you still have right you don't have Tom in right I've I've never put in Hiddles and I don't know I mean you, you know are I you love- are you anti-dicting it because you want it to happen basically is this like a- I don't even know if I like I want it to happen I just I just don't know yeah if like it's 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 such a a clusterfuck in just mm-hmm. like um uh, a lack of depth kind of way you know and i don't know if they'll like actually go to tom hiddleston playing loki and nominate him yeah because I, I don't think like look because like they, they don't really touch live action marvel outside of wandavision and that was like a, a, a huge thing you know like i don't know if they'll i i guess my with- all this stuff you said about it is right i guess the reason i think that tom could get in is because it's like the last the last bow of a massive legacy character who maybe doesn't have like a lot of like maybe Emmy voters don't care, but I feel like just in general, they would care about Marvel because everyone, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's a big deal that it's like the last bow for Loki, like it is a character. So even if the show doesn't get in, I think Tom would get in for like the history of playing the character. I mean, I don't know if they're thinking that deeply about (laughs) his Marvel stint and you know what tom hiddleston will play loki forever like he was Clearly. devastated when they I know. killed him off in infinity war i actually rewatched infinity war last week nice I um my, my preference is infinity war to end game how about you um i i i think like end game is like more fun than infinity war but i i like infinity war for like the the character development mm-hmm. I, guess. I, I they're <laughs> I both say, I, this said they're both great i love endgame too i'm i'm, I'm they're, a, I'm they're a both great endgame. i've seen i've probably seen endgame more i haven't rewatched endgame yet um you gotta get on that joyce 
I know. Well, because like my friend deep. and I were rewatching it together. Like we just hit play because we're not physically together. So we just hit play at the same time. <laughs> we right. watch and text each other. Um, but I have to watch all these other shows. There's like too I don't many have shows. Time for this. There's too many There's shows. Too many I shows. Um, but yeah, I like I don't like he he loves Loki so much. Like he never wants to quit the character. So I could see them like bringing him back some way might have to yeah you know like that's how the show was born right like also because they wanted content for disney plus but it's like oh he went off with the tesseract so we could just do 2012 loki in a tv show okay it was so good uh (laughs) this email's from caleb hi joyce and chris so excited for emmy season i'm now transitioning from running lily gladstone's oscar campaign to her emmys campaign (laughs) what are your thoughts on under the bridges trailer do you see it as a possible emmy contender um, this is another one of those I would file under um concerned about the release date. Yes, same. So uh, the trailer 17. came out last week, I think, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I- I've not watched the show yet. Have you? No, I haven't. That that's like you know again on the list. Too many shows. Too many shows. <laughs> and if we're, it's our job. Like this is what I'm. You're right. Like the like if we have no time to watch everything, how is an Emmy voter going to have time to watch everything? Uh very dark material if you know the story that under the bridge is based on it seems like i mean to get into the mindset to watch that show you really gotta gird your loins i'd imagine right like you know tough tough subject lily looks predictably good in the show uh and based on how it looks i was like are we gonna have another borderline lead supporting debate with her because she's she's the cop and riley she's the cop and riley is the lead who's the author who is who wrote the book uh so i don't know but Again, the release date is a tough, a tough beat. And we're, we were talking earlier about that supporting a, uh, that lead actress in the limited series category. I think I mean, there you is had room. her for a hot minute. I had her for a hot minute, mostly for the bit. Uh, but then I put Anna in. But I think no matter what you think about this category, there's four people who are likely like really set, which would be Jody, Anna, Brie, and Kate Winslet. And then for the sixth and fifth and sixth spot, I have Juno Temple and Naomi Watts. You have Naomi Watts and probably Sofia Vergara, I'd imagine. Yeah. Um, and I would surmise that I, I feel like a lot of people have or might want to drop Kate Winslet because of the regime, you know? Yes. No way she's missing. But I think I, I feel like it could get one nomination, it could just be for her. <laughs> It would be shocking if if she missed because I'll tell you this: even people who don't like it, no one has been like she's bad. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like it's everyone like, like loves her performance. It, like they'll be like, "This shit is wild," but like she's fucking great. Yeah, Kate, innocent basically. Yeah, and I've also seen like I mean it's a polarizing show. Yes. Um, and like kind of messy, but I've also seen people who really like the show too. So. Yeah. Um. So, so neither of us are gonna put Lily in just yet. No, not yet. Yeah, so it's it's dropping April 17th. Yes. So it's going to air, it's eight episodes. It's going to air through the end of May. So it actually, not just because of the title, but it kind of reminds me of Under the Banner of Heaven. I was just going to say, it seems like, it, because it's a Hulu show with like a buzzy Oscar nominee. Well, but that was, that was FX, but exclusively on right. Hulu. Right, right. Yeah, this is but actual. Buzzy Oscar nominee. Mm-hmm. Uh same kind of release date, same kind of premise, really, right? Like, and like, yeah, under the, in the title. Yes. <laughs> and like a recent Oscar nominee who people really loved and maybe thought should have won an Oscar, right? Like mm-hmm. Halo effect. So Andrew got in, right? For Under the Manor of Halo? Yeah, he got in. But like, again, that, that premiered late. It was like April 27th. So there's a yeah. world where Lily gets in. I think it just depends on the reviews. And like we said, like, Andrew was definitely the lead of Under the Manor of Heaven, and Lily mm-hmm. might be a co lead here with Riley based on this subject. So I guess it remains to be seen how she'll do. Yeah. So I guess it's like, are you going to run both of them and lead? Probably. Or split them. Cause I can't imagine them putting Riley in supporting. <laughs> no, I don't so, think that at all. So but... uh, this one's from Daniel. Hi, Joyce and Chris. Daniel here, period. I know many are sad about Oscar season being over, but I'm personally thrilled to be back to talking about the television races. My question is, when will we as a society stop taking Rose Byrne for granted and give her the recognition she deserves? Firstly, she should have won multiple Emmys for damages. It is also crazy that there were four ladies nominated for Mrs. America and she wasn't one of them. 
More recently, she is terrific in Apple TV's physical, but that show doesn't seem to have gained a lot of traction. Her most recent work in Platonic alongside Seth Rogen would also be very worthy of the Best Comedy Actress nomination. In my eyes, she is one of the most underrated working actors in Hollywood. What do you guys think? Also, tennis question for Joyce. I was absolutely thrilled to see Danielle Collins nominated and take home the win at the Miami Open. I know she isn't always the most popular player on tour, but I found her energy and personality irresistible. She's so exciting to watch. Do you think she has one more tournament in her before retiring, Joyce? Thanks, guys. I'm a huge fan of your work. Um, I hope so. But e even if she doesn't, um, I'm glad she got Miami, her first 1,000 title. And mm -hmm. so anyone who doesn't know, which I gather is like 99% of people listening to this, Danielle Collins, uh, American player. She was she had a great college career. She announced after the Australian Open or after she lost at the Australian Open that she's going to retire at the end of the season. Um, for personal reasons, she has some health issues and she wants to start a family. She's 30. So she's been getting a lot of questions about like, like since then she's been playing really well. So a lot of people are like tennis journalists are like, are you sure you're going to retire? You're playing so well. Like, are you rethinking? And she's like, no, like, you know, like, please respect my decision. <laughs> and like, I already decided this. And I think like, because of that, like it's given her freedom to play really well because it's like she's not thinking about next year or anything you know or like it's just like this is my last like tournament here and so she uh and Miami is her home tournament too so uh 1000 events are like the the tournaments like right below Grand Slams so uh she just basically blitzed the field in Miami like she lost her first set and then was winning easily like 6263 and then she faced Elena Rabakina in the final and Elena Wimbledon champion so she was like the favorite but it was just like a great story and she's obviously the hometown girl so she had fans in the stands and she won in straights so it was it was a great victory so I hope she has like another good she she made the Australian final a couple years ago too so I hope she has like, another good slam run and maybe another like 1000 title run i don't know so now it's the clay season so she's she won her first match um already like yesterday so um yeah like it's a great farewell tour so i was happy that she won too but i don't remember the emmy question <laughs> the emmy question about rose burn and platonic oh yeah rose burn um yes yeah, so yeah she should have won four damages and that was a case of like fraud too because she's the lead of damages and mm -hmm. they um, ran her in supporting and Glenn Close and lead and Glenn won. Um, well, I guess it's like, you know, what we were talking about before with Apple shows. I'll say this. I'm, you've not, you will not find a bigger fan of the Neighbors franchise than me. Uh, Neighbors 1 is a classic. And I think Neighbors 2 is maybe one of the funniest comedy sequels ever made because comedy sequels are usually terrible. And Neighbors 2 is absolutely fucking hilarious. And I even I have not watched a single episode of Platonic Joyce. So not a great, not a great look, I guess. I I I love Rose Bird. And yeah, she's very underrated. I love her and Bobby Cannavale. I think they're a great couple. Great. I'm not great. like I I don't like really stand couples or whatever, but I think they're great. Fantastic and, couple. Yeah, fantastic couple. And yeah, I I I don't, yeah, like she like Mrs. America also kind of whelmed you know yeah. wasn't like a huge thing either so is mrs. america I think, like this year's is is the swans this year's mrs america capote versus maybe mm -hmm. hmm. possibly yeah and i think we need to get her on like a big show that Gotta is get like, her on like, hbo embraced by yeah or maybe she could guest star on the bear oh that'd be good She'd get be her on the bear yeah they live in new york so she could just Bobby would be Chicago. fucking great on the bear. He was great yes. in the movie Chef, Joyce. Remember Chef? What a fantastic! I remember Chef. The best, just a fantastic movie. Also, also remember Rose was in Sunshine, and we were yeah. asked like, who's the next Sunshine star to get an Oscar? May maybe she can get the Emmy first. Yeah. Then the Oscar. Yeah. Uh, another email from our old pal Guillermo, who emailed us at slugfest at goldderby.com. Hi guys, it's been a long time since I wrote to you. Sorry about that. LOL, all caps. My question today is about Oscar and Emmy campaigning. I find it funny how sometimes aggressive ones pay off, like Melissa Leo, and sometimes they don't, like Bradley Cooper. Why do you think some of them work? Is it about the person, the narrative, the movie, or the competition? Does it feel like Oscar campaigns are more aggressive than Emmy campaigns? 
And then a bonus question for Joyce. Are you as sad as I am for Dimitrov's loss at the Miami Open final? <laughs> Give Baby Fed a title, please. LOL. Sorry, a long email. That's from Guillermo. Um, I was sad too, but this this is kind of like the opposite result of Danielle. Because I, I guess we couldn't have two feel-good stories in uh -huh. Miami. We can only have one, so Danielle won. But like, Rigor has been resurgent. Um. And yeah, he was he was tipped as baby fed when he was coming up and, you know, had the misfortune of playing in the big three era slash big four. So has not won a slam and he won since he a Masters 1000 in 2017. So this was his first final since and he played immaculate tennis to get to the final. But um, Yannick Sinner destroyed him. So Yannick's on a roll. Um, so I hope Grigor, like Grigor is not retiring this year. So I hope he can pocket another big title soon. But yes, I, that one, I was more prepared for. <laughs> so. <laughs> and then how about campaigns, Joyce? Um, I, I do think you see, there are definitely more aggressive Oscar campaigns than any campaigns. My, there absolutely is. I think it's because while. Like you always say, like Emmy season has been ongoing, right? Like it has not stopped since like it's been over a year, almost a year at this point, right? But like you don't really, I feel like the Oscars just feels like it's an endless run for six straight months. Mm -hmm. And with the Emmys, it does feel like it's condensed a little more into like two months. It's, yeah, like Emmys, because they go through, because like with Emmys, they go through the winter season first of like the guilds and mm -hmm. stuff. So there's not a, a ton of um, campaigning around that. Right. And then it's really like late spring, early summer, like, you know, around voting time right. when you see a lot of the campaigning, you know, that's when you see the actors on actors, you know, and like special editions of like the rap or something. <laughs> you know, like awards issues of like Vanity Fair, you know? So, but I, I also don't think like there's just more volume, like even if it's like an individual contender for the Oscars than there is for individual contenders for the Emmys. Yes. You know? And I do think we've seen like so far this year, I'm already like people I've seen who are like in our campaigning would be like hero for success, uh, for succession, for Shogun. <laughs> For succession. It is like succession. We've talked about it. It is succession. <laughs> but uh, Heroes and Odd, I feel like, is out there a lot. Uh, I thought, like, like we were saying before, like, Leslie Bibb. I like It's like people who are like, hey, remember me? And I'm like, you like me? And, like, I could get a nomination kind of thing. I think the difference with TV shows, too, is that especially if it's a weekly release and it's, like, airing concurrently, like, right now, you know? Like, it, it can also just be regular press, right? Like, you're just doing a post-mortem interview for this big episode for your character, right? So it doesn't come off as campaigning mm -hmm. that much, you know, because like your, your show is airing right now and, you know, you had a big episode and people want to talk to you about it, you right. know? So it's still like, it's like regular promo yeah. for it. Um, but I think there's also just more money put into Oscars. I mean, obviously. Definitely, yeah. You know, and then, and yeah, like I think, I mean, like, most of, like, Leo's campaign, like, she did that herself. Yes. And I think it's it's also, like, she was already the front runner, you know? And, like, Bradley's, I think, like, he didn't do anything like that. But, like, I mean, he just did interviews, you know? He just I talked actually... about his passion for the film and the craft. And, again, like, sincerity doesn't play well on the internet. So. I gotta say, I don't think Bradley Cooper did anything extra this year no i don't think he did anything like he definitely Im imagine if he pulled a melissa leo no Good yeah job. exactly or anybody else who was actually campaigning this year you know what i mean like yeah. bradley cooper did no different no more different things than like any of the other people paul no Giamatti, killian murphy but because people hate bradley cooper it was like amplified and magnified that, yeah like he was... he did normal campaigning he did like um, like people gave him grief last time for a star is born because he did not campaign that much right so this time he actually did normal campaigning and they're still giving him grief yeah. because it's not the way they want him to campaign right uh this one is from mark hi joyce and chris love the show uh the death on shogun this week was so funny i kept rewinding it 
I feel like you guys are the only ones who talk about how funny this show is. Everyone else just raves about its epicness. epicness. What gives? And how do you think its tone will per be perceived by Emmy voters? That was from Mark. Um, This week was the seventh episode, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hilarious. Spoiler alert, I guess, if you haven't watched this video. At the end. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also watched it multiple times. I was like LOLing my ass off. So it's... uh. Who, who uh, it's a uh, so um Toranaga's son yes so we saw he, previously he sets up the i think one or two episodes before he blows up all the horses right that was a great scene. that was that was, that was the fourth episode great horse explosion. love a horse explosion and then in this one he's gonna like go in and, and plot murder plot and get, uh, kill uh on the ride his uncle yes because um uh Toranaga's uh brother just had revealed his betrayal because he's going to take his seat on the council yes. of regents so uh Tornaga's son comes in, in the middle of the night and he's going to kill so like he's never killed anyone before and it's like he's early on in the episode like he's in a hot spring he's like i heard that your first kill is better than your first time with a woman yes <laughs> and so he tries to kill his uncle and he <laughs> so he chases him out um, and uh, Saki, I think, is uh, his uncle's name, right? Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. wearing this comically long robe. Yes. It's so long. And then he, so like he's on the ground and then like Toranaga's son is about to kill him. And he runs towards him and he slips on the robe, falls backward, cracks his head open. It is the funniest shit I've ever seen. And he's dead. And, uh... and that's the end of the episode. <laughs> It's a crazy ending, completely unexpected. Like, definitely like a whoops, uh, dead. And so then funny. it kind of reminded me of like, I mean, it's not like this, but it reminded me of when like Marvin gets shot in the face in Pulp Fiction, that kind of thing, where you're just like, oh shit, I did not expect that. The violence happen. in the show was so funny. <laughs> and then to me, what makes it even funnier is not, I think if you're watching this, you're like, wow, Joyce and Chris are fucked. Like, how are they laughing at this? What makes it funnier is later, you'll see the response that Tornaga has to this death. In the eighth episode, yeah, next And week. it just is like completely, again, like it's a, like the tone, it is absolutely like Logan-esque, right? It yes, is like Logan-esque. So that is the most Logan that he is. His son, uh, his son is is Kendall, R.I.P. Kendall. Kendall actually dies on this show. <laughs> it would be like if Kendall died and like Tornaga, and then Logan is like this fucking idiot, right? Yeah. So it, it is very funny. I do wonder how the tone will, I, I don't know. Like the thing is like, Again, who could say how popular these shows are? But I know real people who are watching Shogun and are excited by it. It does seem like it's kind of like broken through whatever like layers it's needed to. And I think it has broken through because it is very entertaining in addition to being like epic and cool. And it is like Game of Thrones in that way where I guess it was like Game of Thrones is also like, enter like it's an entertaining show, right? Beyond mm -hmm. its spectacle. And people just like watching it. And it is like a melodrama and a soap opera and all these different things. So I was like, will the tone... Will people understand that tone or are they going to take it too seriously because of how people have like positioned it as this like serious epic? Yeah, I, I think that's kind of what the question was getting yeah. at. Right. Yeah. Like, I think. I, I do think like, you know, f with Game of Thrones, there there was more chat about like how fun of a show it is. Right. Yes. And it does have more battles, as we've talked about than Shogun does. But I do think. Like, at le like a majority of the discourse around Shogun is just about like the scale and the scope and yeah, like the epicness and it's, it does feel like it's being talked about as a, a way more serious drama and there's a lot of humor in it. And it's, it's not, it's not as serious as you might think it sounds like. No. And I, and I think it knows it's not as serious. Yeah, like, and it and definitely it, knows that. And honestly, like at, at TCA, like one of the questions was actually about like the humor and and they, well, it was like asked in a way of like, did they do that to like offset the violence? And their answer was basically like, no. And they also don't think like they're gratuitous in their violence either which i agree with like the no. the violence is is funny honestly and it's yeah. kind of it's very abrupt too and it doesn't like overly linger on like anything so but i i, I don't know like i think i i think 
yeah, it's kind of talked about as like a way more like serious prestige than it is. Um, but in terms of like the Emmys, I I don't think they think about it that way. I think they just like to watch what they watch and like what they like. Yeah. And I think I think they're gonna like the show. Yeah. So uh next email. This one was from Sarah. Hi, Joyce and Chris. I'm excited to watch Ripley this weekend, and I'm sure Andrew Scott is great, but I can already tell that film Twitter will be annoying about it and will try to manifest an Emmy nomination for him after his Oscar snub for all of us strangers. Some might use that as an argument for getting a nomination too, but I think the Emmys couldn't care less. They didn't even nominate him for Fleabag. Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> yes is the answer. Uh, I don't... I, I haven't been second. I do think he'll get nominated because I think it's an easier yeah, category. Yeah, I have him getting it too. But It's an easier category and it's easier to imagine getting in, but I don't think they're like, got to get Andrew Scott a nomination. No, I don't even think they remember that he was snubbed for Fleabag. I don't think they care that he was snubbed for All of Us Strangers. Um, I, I do think, yeah, there is like this fallacy, this logical fallacy that people think the Emmys just nominate like oscar adjacent people like this is why this fallacy is wrong oscar voters didn't watch all of us strangers do you think emmy voters are going to go out of their way to watch this movie right and they're definitely not going to be like oh man he was snubbed for all of us strangers i gotta vote for him at the emmys for a completely different project to make up for his oscar snub like what (laughs) We talk all the time about how they don't have enough time to watch shows. They're going to watch movies that they don't have to watch. Like if, if, they, if they're going to vote for him, it's going to be because they like him in Ripley. Yeah. And I think they're going to like him in Ripley. And that's why I'll get in because I think it's like a very easy performance. to. And it's like, even in terms of Fleabag, I mean, I think he's better in Fleabag, but it's like he has much more to do in Ripley. Yeah. It's actually, it's interesting because of like, so the way he plays, I think it's also because the, in this version the character is older so he doesn't play him like a 25 year old loser you know right um so he's he's more of a loner in in this ripley and yeah and it's it's all it's like he's more like world weary too so he's not i i feel like um like we've seen him be incredibly charming in his past projects like Fleabag mm-hmm. and Sherlock you know and like it you don't really see a ton of that in Ripley like even though it's like it would make sense for him to turn on the charm to like ingratiate himself into Dickie's life and at the same time it's like you don't really get that energy from Johnny's performance either like because I feel like when you watch the movie like the second that Jude Law comes on screen, you're like, "Fuck yeah, I want to be friends with that guy." And if I'm not friends with him, I want to be him, you know. And you don't mm-hmm. really get that with Johnny either. Yeah. So it's it's like a very different energy, the show. But it but it is like the Andrew show, and um, I also think film Twitter will be very loud in its support. We are like we we're saying before. We've already seen like the 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 sub tweets or like the vague tweets about like how wow it's the best looking Netflix show because I feel like. You throw Andrew Scott in off all the strangers. You put Robert Ellswood in there. And I'm guilty of this too, because like I love Robert Ellswood. You're going to be like, man, this is like elevated television. You know what I mean? Like it's like IP that we know is a beloved movie and like all these great things. And it's going to be like, look at this is so much better than all this bad TV. And I'm like, it's good. TV still, a lot of TV still bad, but I'm not going to love it because uh, of that, I guess. It's, it's like, I, I would put it, I don't think it's like, an amazing show but i think it's good and it's you know again very watchable it's definitely not a a terrible show um and and yeah like i think it has a lot of things going for it um in terms of him like getting a nomination you know just Mm -hmm. being on netflix alone and obviously they're already doing promo for it so i don't know if he'll win i don't know we'll deal with that when we get to it (laughs) but you you know you know if, if and when he gets in, they'll be like, he's got to win. You know, that will be. It will be next. fun to see him having to win versus like uh, a hero for, for Shogun. Uh, last one here, Joyce. This one was from Claire. Hi, Joyce and Chris. Love the show. 
Colin Farrell said Back to the Future is the movie he's seen the most. I didn't see this interview, Joyce, but I'll I'll take I'll take Claire's word for it. What are the movies and TV shows you've seen the most? Joyce, you can't say Mighty Ducks or Friends. Oh shit. Wow, caught. rude. <laughs> you caught. You didn't see this clip. He said he said he had never been asked this question in 25 years. And I was like, you know really? what? I did see him. I saw the person tweet it and say he, uh, he, he said he never answered this question in 25 years. And I was like, I'm good. I don't need to watch it. <laughs> well, he said Back to the Future. He also okay. named a bunch of other movies. Um, and then and then he said, like, uh, a recent movie he's watched four times was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, me and Colin then are fucking right there. I watched that four or five so, times. Myself. Which also made me think like, oh, last year, like during like all the events, like was he just saying this to Austin Butler? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. And um, was- I mean, like this is still easy for me, even if I can't name those. So like 10 things I hate about you. I just rewatched that again oh. on Sunday because it was the 20th anniversary. So I watched that every year on its release. Um, it. On your Saving Twitter. Private Ryan. Yes. Yeah, and I watched my uh, DVD of Ten Things, with the the commentary, because um, that was released for the tenth anniversary in two thousand nine. Um, I mean, I watch a lot of movies. Like, I, like I watch The Wedding Planner if it's on TV. Just mm-hmm. like I just stop and watch it. Like Ocean's Eleven, I've seen a million times. Good Will Hunting, The Sandlot. Um. I just I, say, I I rewatched Shakespeare in Love last week. I've seen that a million times too. The Departed, of course. I don't. A lot of my rewatches are older films, like '90s, like early 2000s. I don't watch rewatch a lot of recent films. So during the year, I'll rewatch things. Like I've watched Oppenheimer like three or four times, Barbie like five times, but I probably won't watch them again for a while. So like older ones, Departed definitely is up there for me. I've probably seen that like a ton of times. Goodfellas obviously is a default answer because I've seen it so much, but not as much in recent years. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. And TV wise, like mostly I'll revisit like we like Parks and Rec or like Office or any of those like you know. Like, See, I, I've shows. never rewatched those, and I mean, yeah. Besides Friends, I I watch Breaking Bad every year, and now I oh, watch Succession every oh, year. Oh, Succession is also an easy answer. Yeah um 30 rock i do i just finished a rewatch of that in december um well so er i only rewatched the first eight seasons yeah okay i've never done a full rewatch of er that's funny but those are usually my tv shows there's a lot like some tv shows i think about rewatching and i just never do it nice it's tough i would would love to rewatch mad men but i've never done that either and like i i loved it when it was on but i've never Then like uh, I'm gonna do a Mad Men rewatch yeah. right now. So. Uh, all right, Joyce. Well, this was great. Uh, we'll be back next week. Sympathizer talk and all kinds of other stuff. You'll have it in first everywhere. Definitely. All right. I'll talk to you then. Bye. Mm-hmm.